Kuzampo and welcome to this week's edition of the Bhutan This Week, our weekly news magazine program. I am Sharab Doji and these are our top stories of the week. His Majesty returns to the capital after a nine-day tour of the Southern Districts. His Holiness the Jaikimpo to preside over Kabum oral transmission in Vinci. And despite spending millions, cold storages in the country remain underutilized. His Majesty the King concluded a nine-day royal tour of the southern districts and returned to the capital last Sunday. During the tour, His Majesty visited Punaka, Tsirang, Sarpang and Gelifu, Samdujongkar, Samsi and Fensling, meeting with members of the community represented by sector heads, civil servants, local leaders and the private sector. While on the tour, His Majesty granted audiences to the participants of the 57th Batch Accelerated Daesung Training Program. The 57th Batch Training is ongoing simultaneously in Dewatang, Tendu, Tashichuling, Jimiling, and Tashikatsau. With 1,159 participants, the 57th Batch Training takes up the number of Daesoups trained so far to 38,935. His Majesty also visited the Gelsung Academy site, being developed in Jamsoling in Samsi, and met with the people working on the site, including participants of the Daesung for Gelsung program, who are being trained on the job in high-quality infrastructure development works. His Majesty was accompanied by the Prime Minister on the tour. Sunampem for BBS News. His Holiness the Jaikimpo will preside over the oral transmission of 11 volumes of his Kabum at the Oso Central School in Lindsay from 3rd of May onwards. This will be the first ever oral transmission of any kind in the Eastern Districts. Preparations are in full swing at the Oso Central School football ground for the event. The oral transmission will be conducted at the request of the administration and Rabde of six Eastern Districts. The fourth National Council elections have concluded and the results were officially declared on the 21st of April. It seems that voters have once again shown a preference for fresh faces in the National Council as 18 new candidates have been chosen to represent them. Out of the 11 incumbents seeking re-election, only two were successful in securing a seat in the House. The people of Bumtang elected 40-year-old Ken Chutsring. He won the election with 4,381 votes. He had previously served as an administrative officer with the Department of Local Governance. One of the incumbent National Council members, 42-year-old Sangiduji of Chuka, got 7,958 votes. The NC-elect of Dagana is 40-year-old Birendra Chimoria. He was elected after securing 7,143 votes. He contested in past elections and worked at the Bhutan Football Federation. Voters in Gaza chose 48-year-old Sering. He secured 986 votes. He had served in Rapa and Zurich Jusum. Securing 2,690 votes, Dago Seringla is the NC-elect from Ha. The 45-year-old had served as a school principal. 48-year-old Kezang Lindup from Hinsi was elected after securing 4,600 votes he served as a civil servant. Monger elected 42-year-old Tsring Wangchen. He secured 6,066 votes. He had served in the civil society organizations and as the regional coordinator of the Desong Regional Office. Voters in power chose the incumbent National Council member Ugin Tsring. The 53-year-old won the election after securing 3,547 votes. And in Pema Gatsil, 34-year-old Jamyang Namge is the NC elect. He secured 7,149 votes. He had worked as a deputy chief veterinary officer and statistical analyst. The people of Punaka chose 41-year-old Namge Doji. He secured 3,316 votes. He contested in the past elections and worked in the private sector. 37-year-old Seong Rinchen from Samdrup Jonkar is the NC elect. He got 5,639 votes. He had served in civil service. In Samtsi, voters chose 43-year-old Tashi Dendup. He secured 7,161 votes. He had served as a teacher and in the private sector. 
38-year-old Pemotashi won the election in Sarbang. He secured 5,253 votes. He was the founder and chief executive officer of a legal consultancy. Securing 4,102 votes, Lake Isering will represent Tempo. The 43-year-old had served as a teacher. 43-year-old Som Topge from Tashigan is the NC-elect. He secured 12,958 votes. He previously worked at Bhutan Broadcasting Service. 36-year-old Sonam Tenzin, a former general manager of Bhutan Industrial Gas, was elected with 3,624 votes in Trashyansi. From Trongsa, 45-year-old Rinzi Namge won the election. He secured 3,109 votes. He served as a school principal. 42-year-old Nimawandi from Tsirang won the election by securing 5,359 votes. He served as a teacher. A former television producer, 40-year-old Pubdoji, was elected from Wandi Fodra. He secured 4,143 votes. And 39-year-old Sering Tsomo, the lone female candidate elected this election, will represent Shemgong. She got 3,170 votes. She had served as a teacher. For the Kilhazum, Tsering Diki for BBS News. Pitched against her four male counterparts in Shemga, 39-year-old Tsering Somo began her National Council elections campaign a few months ago with zeal and determination. And her efforts during the campaign were rewarded by the people of Kenrik Namsum when Tsering Somo got elected as Shemga's National Council Member of Parliament. Tsering Somo is from Sonamthang village. A mother of two was the only woman candidate from Shemgang in this National Council election. She secured over 3,000 votes to win Jemgang's seat in the National Council. A day after the election, Tsering Tsomo was greeted by her well wishes in the Lower King region of Banbang. After giving a thorough introduction, a group of women came to me and this is what they told me. Wow, we never knew you would be able to speak like that. First of all, you're small in stature. Second, we didn't think you would have so much confidence. When you were able to do that, it makes us really proud. You have our support and if you get elected, other women will get the motivation. Us women should give our hundred percent once we decide to contest the election. Tsering believes her pledges were realistic and that is what made people to support her. Apart from her many campaign pledges, Tsering sees promoting ecotourism in the district as a first priority. We'll discuss this with the relevant agencies and people. We'll discuss promoting tourism in Shemgang from a policy perspective. It is high time we promote ecotourism in Shemgang. Tsuring Tsomo is the second woman from Shemgang to be elected as National Council MP. In Shemgang, a total of 11,591 voters came to franchise their voting rights this election. The 2023 National Council elections saw five women candidates. For Pema Samdrup in Jemgang, Sunam Pem for BBS News. The Royal Civil Service Commission has increased the retirement age of all civil servants. The commission in a notification last week announced that the decision was made considering the increase in the life expectancy to 70.2 years. The last revision of the superannuation was made two decades ago. According to the Bhutan Civil Service Rules and Regulations 2018, the executives and specialist level civil servants had to retire from service at the age of 60. Professional and management level civil servants at 58 years, civil servants falling under the category of SS4 to SS1 at 58 years, S5 to S1 and operational category at 56 years. However, with the amendment, the executives and specialist category civil servants can retire at 63, an increase of three years. While the civil servants in professional and management category can retire at 60, which is an increase of two years. Similarly, the retirement age for SS4 to SS1, S5 to S1 and operational category has been increased by a year. The decision to increase the retirement age of civil servants was made during the 179th Commission meeting. Kinzang Hadden, PBS News. 
Now, many students are facing mental health issues that affect them academically, socially, and emotionally. But tackling the problem is more challenging without enough counselors. Of the 175 full-fledged counselors in the country, 27 of them resigned between last year and March of this year. In Yach for Higher Secondary School in Tempo, there are more than 1,200 students. The school has two counselors who catered counseling and guidance services to the students. However, they resigned last year. Although the school received a counselor this year, the school management said it is difficult for the lone counselor to cater services to a large number of students. In the month, a counselor caters services to more than 20 students. When it comes to Yanchifu Higher Secondary School, we had two counselors. However, they resigned and we received only one recently. I don't know how we can cope up, as many students need psychological support. I'm in doubt about how we will be able to support the students with only one counselor. Even the school's full-fledged counselor, Tashi Norbu, shared similar views. Me being only the one in this school, actually I have a tough time to cover a more number of students because uh, we have around more than 1,200 plus students in this school and in order to cater, to cater our services uh, to those students, it's very difficult. According to the Ministry of Education and Skills Development, besides the 15 counsellors who resigned last year, three more applied for resignation this month. As mental health is a concern among all age group of students, it is important to deploy adequate counsellors in schools across the country. However, currently, the ministry doesn't send counsellors to primary schools. As a result, in some of the primary schools, the management identifies a focal teacher for counselling. Without a full-fledged counsellor, a few focal teachers say they are facing challenges as they have to multitask alongside teaching. Uh, the current scenario in the... Uh, counselors in the primary schools is that uh, as far as I'm concerned and I know I think we don't have counselors assigned to primary schools and uh, uh, from what I see I think uh, primary schools need counselors the most like full-fledged counselors according to the officials from the ministry initially when they were recruiting counselors mental health issues and the need for guidance were more prominent in secondary schools that's why the ministry has sent counsellors to secondary schools only. Officials added that the ministry is now discussing with the Royal Civil Service Commission and the Royal University of Bhutan to recruit more counsellors. There are around 500 schools in the country. The Ministry of Education and Skills Development is also um, increasing the intake uh, at the College of Education in Samsi. And uh, <clears throat> the uh, Ministry of Education and Skills Development is also uh, in discussion with RCC in uh, placing two counselors in secondary schools, uh, preferably one male and one female counselor, and also trying to place counselors in the primary schools. According to the Samsi College of Education, the institution doesn't receive enough applicants. Every year, the college announces 35 slots for counseling courses. In many developed countries, there is a minimum requirement of student to counselor ratio. For instance, in the US, American School Counselor Association recommends one counselor for 250 students. For Sonomudin, Karmasam Tenongda, PBS News. The recent surveillance and risk assessment of the six southern districts revealed the high risk of dengue outbreak in 2023 with the onset of the monsoon season. According to the Dengue Vector Surveillance and Risk Assessment Report, dengue cases were only detected around May in the past. However, around 40 cases are already detected as of the 14th of April. Hence, the Ministry of Health advises the public to take extra precautions to avert a major outbreak of dengue. Bhutan saw the worst dengue outbreak in 2019 with about 5,000 cases and six deaths, including two pregnant women. Common dengue infection symptoms are fever, headache, joint pain, rashes on the body, and pain in the back of the eyes. Severe dengue can be life-threatening within a few hours and often requires care at a hospital. As of the second week of April, 40 cases were reported from Sarpong, Chuka, Samrukjongkar, Gumtu in Samsi, Pemagasil, and Jemga. 
The 2019 outbreak report states inadequate support from the public and the lack of assistance from relevant sectors. The report found southern residents having empty containers, barrels and tires with stagnant water in the surroundings. People not using mosquito nets, wearing short sleeve shirts and keeping stagnant water in flower pots were some of the reasons cited for the dengue outbreak in 2019. The 2019 report also found that most infected people had mosquitoes breeding in the water stored in the refrigerated drip pans in their homes. The Ministry of Health calls for collective cooperation from everyone to prevent a major outbreak. People who are owning the workshops, they have, they, they have to make sure that unused tires left, uh, uh, left unattended, they have to cover, uh, cover it nicely. The people have to, if they have the stored water, they have to keep the, uh, the st uh, bucket, bucket closed and even the toilets and surroundings should be kept clean. And, uh, uh, we, can, we can see lots of flower pots in the, in the south, uh, around, around their buildings and uh, the corridors. They should not be keeping that filled with water, so that should be kept clean. Moreover, the ministry also urges people travelling to the southern districts take extra precautions. Mosquitoes usually bite in the morning and evening hours. The ministry urges Tromdes and building owners to initiate cleaning campaigns around their respective areas. Devika Pradhan for BBS News. Now, if you are constructing a house at the moment, we have bad news for you. The Natural Resources Development Corporation sand stockyard in Wandipoda, which supplies sand to the western region, might run out of sand in a few weeks. The NRDC officials say even the sand deposits in the Punasachu are low, and this might lead to a drastic decrease in sand supply from Wandipoda starting mid of next month. The sand stockyard at Sokorna village carries a deserted look. Usually, almost 200 truckloads of sand is supplied from Wandipoda daily. Sokorna stockyard is running out of sand. According to the NRDCL's Shah branch office, it has stopped dredging sand from the Punatsanchu in Sokorna. The branch office also stopped taking online sand orders. There is no sand in the river this time, as there was no flood last year. So it is true that we have low sand production. We are thinking that sand in our stockyard will last only up to the mid of next month. The office supplies three types of sand, one directly from the river, another from the stockyard and the third from the dredging sites. Sand is supplied from dredging sites only after sand at the stockyard is exhausted. We will not be able to supply more than 60 to 70 truckloads of sand from next month onwards. With the next best option to get sand for the western region being Pinsoling and Kalikola in Dagana, truckers who ferry sand say sand prices in the market will increase drastically. One sand extraction site is in Pinsoling and it takes at least three days to reach one truckload of sand to Thimpu. Accordingly, the transportation charges will increase since expenses will increase. Therefore, everybody is facing problem when consumers question the NRDCL about increased transportation charges. It is just in the fourth month and there is a sand shortage. Later, for a truckload of sand, we would have to charge almost 29,000 yutum per truckload because we normally charge that much when we transport it from Finsuling and Kalikola. Concerns have also been raised about increased sand trade in the black market. The Natural Resources Development Corporation has six sand dredging machines at the Punatsanchu site below Rinchagang village. The branch office will deploy a further two machines at the site soon. For Changaduji Nwandipoda, Kinzang Hadden, BBS News. The gold storage facilities in Sarpong and Wandipoda, built at a combined cost of over 94 million yutum, are still not in use after they were opened to the public around five months ago. People point out the lack of awareness on the availability of the facilities. 
They also say the facilities were inaugurated when fruits and vegetables were mostly out of season. However, officials in both the districts started reaching out to the people recently in preparation for the upcoming harvest season. This is the integrated cold storage along the Gelifu Sarpang Highway at Samtiling Gewuk. It is constructed at a cost of over 38 million yultrum. Though it is meant for farmers to preserve their surplus vegetables, fruits and livestock products during summer and supply to schools, institutions and the market during winter, it is empty as of now. However, officials from the Food Corporation of Bhutan and the Regional Agricultural Marketing and Cooperatives Office in Gelifu think this will change. They met members of farmers' groups and cooperatives and local vegetable vendors to encourage them to make use of the facility. We received clients from FCB officials at Wansisna in Tempu who wanted to keep their apples in our facility if we give them a discount of 50 chetum. But I didn't accept it. Firstly, I have to facilitate the service to the people of Sarbang, and if there are no users there, then we will give the opportunity to the farmers of Tsirang and other neighboring districts. The farmers are now planning to use the facility for storing apple, potato and other farm produce this season. When the cold storage was opened, apple season was over and the potato season didn't start. That way we couldn't make use of the facility. We were not aware if the cold storage construction was completed. After attending the meeting today, we came to know that the facility is initiated for the people of Sarpang and especially for groups and cooperatives. Moreover, as the charges are lower for the groups and cooperatives, we are really happy about it. When the vegetable season starts, we can keep potatoes, apples and oranges in the cold storage. Currently, private businesses will be charged 42 nyeltrum per square feet of space for using the facility. However, farmers' groups and cooperatives can use the same space being 27 nyeltrum. Meanwhile, seven farmers' groups and a vegetable retailer in Sarpong registered with the FCB to use the facility. In Wandipoda, the facility, which is meant for the people of Gaza, Punaka and Wandipoda, is also not in use. The FCB said they are carrying out some final finishing and handing taking over works. The chief executive officer of the corporation says an announcement will be made soon on the availability of facility besides their awareness programs. Meanwhile, the coal storage in Tashigan is still under construction. The government included the construction of coal storage as one of the critical components of the Economic Contingency Plan 2020-2021 to ensure food security and achieve self-reliance. The Agriculture and Livestock Ministry prioritized and initiated the construction of three multi-chambered coal stores at strategic locations in Sarpong, Tashigong and Wandipoda. For Karma Wandi and Changa Doji, Sringzam, BBS News. And that's all we have in this week's edition of The Bhutan This Week. Tune in again same time next week. I'm Sharab Doji. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.